in continuation with the previous video in this we will see about the important examination points that you should not miss in the case of glomerular disease so as i told before part a consists of that the basic de basic details of the patient part b the entire history followed by that we have to tell the summary then here from part c part d is the important investigation i have mentioned the part e to mention that urine examination is one of the important component before making the diagnosis this usually get missed that's why i kept it as a fifth part so don't miss after the systemic examination urine examination have to be there part c we are and uh, i divided it as general examination and the head to foot examination so that we won't miss any point in the general examination it is similar as in the md medicine case only first the patient conscious oriented to time place and person and the vitals one important part about the pulse is uh, to tell about whether it is present in all the peripheral pulses or not radial brachial internal carotid the carotid femoral dorsal spd anterior tibial posterior tibial all have to be filled because when some kind of vasculitis this might not be there so that is one of the important clue with respect to the bp it have to be checked uh, as a standardized office blood pressure measurement one important point is look for orthostatic hypotension it is nothing but fall of more than 20 mm of mercury after standing for 30 minutes and they have to be comparable in all four limbs then these things are same as in the case look for the pallor ictus sinusitis clubbing fetal edema and the jvp jvp to tell about the volume overload state fetal edema till what level it is present whether it is unilateral or bilateral rest to is same then another important point is measurements height weight and the pmi in a gn case why it is important because fsgs secondary fsgs is common in obesity it is most important in the case of ckd to assess the nutrition but it have to be mentioned in the case of uh, glomerular disease and uh, you can emphasize on particular point depends on what differential diagnosis you are keeping so in the part uh, first uh, part of the part c like we are measure uh, we are telling the basic general examination finding then particularly next is the head to foot examination i have mentioned this bnf brainer pure kick factor order it may be you can remember it as a mnemonic why i have mentioned don't miss bruit because it is one of the component of hypertension renovascular hypertension bruit might be there nutrition which is very important in the case of ckd and in uh, gn case also you can mention regarding what are things to assess for uh, nutrition on bmi you already mentioned but to tell about the mid arm circumference waist hip ratio if you are particularly focusing in the ckd or if it is a case of obesity skin fold thickness especially in the case of CK, uh, ckd for a glomerular disease at least a mid arm circumference is enough because to show the examiner that you are looking into this component of the uh, nutrition component of the renal disease also f is the fundus fundus examination should not be missed so starting from head to foot it is important to tell about the hair whether it is sparse any alopecia is seen or not in the eye any signs of uveit is cataract cataract might be due to steroid use in aprotic syndrome presence of any signs of uveit is conjunctivitis nasal bleed nasal testing oral ulceration with respect to hair ear we are tell about the hearing or any discharge hearing you can tell in the cranial nerves also as of now you can mention about whether any discharge is there or not and the neck about the thyroid swelling and in the nail you have to tell about the nail findings whether it is uh, white nail if the patient had any history of fistula stress scars might be there if the patient underwent any surgery or uh, sorry dialysis dialysis catheter marks will be there so you have to look for the dialysis catheter marks over the thigh and uh, over this area look for the renal free where to look exactly anatomical location it is just 2 cm above and the lateral to the supraumbilical region that is the ideal place to look for a renal artery stenosis bruit what is the landmark for the kidney that comes the using the trans pyloric plane and the trans tubular plane you can mention the landmark so the landmark and the basic question that can be asked in this head to foot examination it 
itself takes around 20 minutes to explain all the component that I will try to upload in another video. As of now, you just remember you have to look for the renal artery buoy. Where is renal artery buoy can be seen? It is in the renal angle on the posterior side. Look for renal angle tenderness if it is a case of or if it is if the history was suggestive of any UTI. So don't miss the renal angle tenderness. And this other than that, you have to turn about the skin turgor, skin uh, elasticity, these things in general have to be men mentioned other important finding as per your differential diagnosis that you kept then coming to the part d which is the systemic examination which is nothing but similar to as we mentioned in the uh, md final case only inspection palpation percussion and the auscultation what we should not miss is we should not miss the apical impulse in a case of nephrology any case of nephrology because this is the one thing which tells about chronicity if the patient is a long-standing hypertension the patient will be having down and out apical impulse if hypertension is of short duration it, it might be in the same location so it forms a very important clue now you have to look about the pericardial rub because it tells about the uremia, uremia. so the examiner might ask you to tell only the positive finding in the examination then what you have to mention with respect to the general examination compulsorily tell about the pulse blood pressure pallor if it is present or absent and the important negative findings also tell eyes are clear ear oral ulcer not there there whatever it is and with respect to the fundus is normal it have to be mentioned whether it is positive finding or negative finding that is one of the important component of the examination so coming directly to cvs even if it is cvs is normal you have to mention about the apical impulse in the fifth intercostal space and regarding the pericardial rub RS, you have to look for the presence of any basal repetition which indicates patient in the volume overload state. Per abdomen, similar only inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. You can mention about to look for ascites. With respect to the ascites, you can tell about the fatal sign or shifting wellness of the fluid thrill, which is same as the empty medicine cases only. And regarding the brewery, brewery you can mention over here or you can mention there only in the general examination. So in the CNS, it is in the nephrological case, it is very important to mention about the peripheral neuropathy. Sensation have to be checked because vasculitis, even multiple myeloma, these are all the some of the condition which might present with peripheral neuropathy. So the order is higher mental function, cranial nerves, motor system, sensor system, and the autonomic system. In the motor system, you have to tell about the bulb tone power and reflex just study about this reflex grading power grading anything might be asked so once it is complete come to the final step which is the dipstick test the patient have to pass the urine then with the help of the dipstick whichever the dipstick it is available in our institute we got only for the dipstick was available for glucose and protein so just you can tell about the glucose and protein majority of the cases it will be having only these two sometimes there might be presence of detection for ketone blood might be there so based on this whatever it is available you have to mention if the patient was not passing urine during the stipulated time of the exam you can mention that it was not done because the patient didn't pass so after part a part b part c d and e you have to give a final diagnosis so part A forms the basic details of the patient, part B the important component I have discussed. After the part A and part B, you should make a summary in your own language. How you interpreted, what is the syndrome, what is the nephrological syndrome you have uh, interpreting based on the history. From part C and part D, complete the examination in total. Head to foot, you should not miss. BNF, don't miss. Brew, nutrition, yeah. I have mentioned it as a mnemonic because these are the three common findings I always miss. In a case of hypertension, I might not have looked for this. Security nutrition is very important. Fundus is also very important. In the part E, especially the urine examination before diagnosis. So once these five parts are complete, your case history and examination is complete. At the end of this, you have to give a final diagnosis. In the format of syndromic diagnosis, etiology, comorbidity should be mentioned complication if it is present have to be mentioned for example in the case of nephrotic syndrome syndrome diagnosis nephrotic syndrome etiological diagnosis probably primary glomerular disease if it is so my first differential for that is 
membrane is nephropathy second differential fsgs third differential ig whatever it is so points favoring points against you have to keep in mind if there is uh, for example if the history of the examination doesn't suggest you have iga don't tell there is if it is only pointing towards only one differential diagnosis one will be well and good just you have to confident with the differential diagnosis why you are making and the patient is having hypertension anemia with the signs of dvt so the this is the example so how you have to tell so my final diagnosis syndromic diagnosis nephrotic syndrome etiology primary glomerular disease first dd membranous nephropathy with the comorbidity of hypertension and anemia with complications of dvt from here the questions regarding treatment investigation will go but 90 percentage of the final exam cases will be having uh, questions revolving around prior to this step only so because based on the history and the examination only examiner will have a clear idea how strong you are in the subject so try to practice these history and examination points and whichever points i have missed in this you can add it in the format i hope this might be helpful in a case case of glomerular disease i will try to upload further for post transplant ckd msd and capd cases also if any other particular case you want let me know